Hi, my name is Dave Bohan. I'm Vice President and Chief Development Officer of the Valley Hospital Foundation. And I'm here with Joe Lorino, Vice President of Facilities Management and Project Executive for this great project. And today, we have a wonderful opportunity going through and viewing various uh, parts of the project and seeing the progress and explaining how the hospital will look uh, when it's finished. So Joe, what do you say? Let's go. Sounds good. All right. Okay, so Joe, we are in one of our 372 patient rooms and uh, talk about this. We're obviously standing in the patient area or the patient care area. So the, the head wall is right here? Head wall is right here, which was all prefabricated off-site. Right behind you, David, you'll see the clinical area where the nurses and other caregivers will be able to work on the patient. And then finally, probably I think is the most important to patient care, is the family area. We, we believe that the patient and their families will have, the patients that have their families here will have better outcomes because the family will be part of their care. Very supportive. And then each room will have its own private uh, uh, bathroom with a uh, roll-in shower. That's right? right. So you can see it's almost uh, like a hotel suite. Very nice. And, and um, there's going to be a large flat screen uh, panel on, on this opposite wall, right? That's so tell right. Me, tell me what kind of things are going to happen through that. So we've gone, we've gone through some intensive um, uh, work with the IS department. Um, as well as consultants, but the foot wall here will house a 75-inch TV for each patient area. The patient, along with their pillow speaker, will be able to control not only the TV for entertainment, internet, and so forth, but the caregiver will be able to call up, whether it's x-rays, lab, result. lab results, whatever, through that TV and show it oh, to wow. the patient. They will be able to control temperature in this room, mm -hmm. control the lighting in this room, as well as the mechanical shades that we will put in there. So, so again, they can really control their own environment. If they like it cool, if they like it warmer, they'll be able to adjust it themselves. We thought it would be uh, probably the best uh, satisfier for patients because temperature, noise, uh, and of course, entertainment is, is one of the biggest patient dissatisfiers that we know. About a quarter of that panel will have that permanent board on it that will list all the caregivers for that patient for that shift. Also, our badges are, will be RFID badges. Oh, so, when so David, when Dr. David walks in the room, it'll display, hi, I'm Dr. David. Wow. And it will recognize, as well as, as, well as a, a plumber, an EVS associate, or someone providing food because then you have a first name basis and it sure. becomes a lot more friendlier. Sure. Tell me some things that <clears throat> you learned from COVID in terms of the hospital design. We were lucky that we were in initial schematic design when COVID hit us and some of the things that we did was be able to turn increase the number of negative pressure rooms or isolation rooms in each unit mm -hmm. from two to four and then again uh, turn the entire unit, all 36 beds, into negative pressure rooms with a push of a button wow. through our building management system. Every time a pump, an IV pump, goes into alarm or the bag is empty, the nurse or caregiver would have to suit up with PPE, right. come in, <clears throat> reset the alarm or fill the bag, and then go out again and dispose of PPE. Sure. So in this case, we are installing permanent pass-through uh, um, uh, tubes through the wall that are NFPA certified uh, that can be installed uh, permanently. In addition to saving on the PPE equipment, it also reduces the number of um, intrusions or disturbances to the patient who's trying to sleep or, or, or recover or whatever. And I know that, you know, giving the patient as much privacy as possible is also important to their recovery. That's right. Um, I know one of the things we're also doing in terms of the supply closet is interesting. So talk about that. Yes, uh, the supply closet, which is uh, known as the nurse server, will house all the supplies, including medication for the patient here. That supply closet or nurse server will be stocked from the hallway. From the outside. From the outside, so instead of the inside. So the, nur and the nurse can come in, use the supplies or administer the medication. We've doubled the amount of 
oxygen outlets. We've doubled the amount of medical air and medical vacuum outlets, as well as the normal and emergency power electrical outlets. I see. So we've converted <laughs> every room to a critical care level room just by doing this. You've got some privacy um, features there by being able to kind of turn the shades between the glass to give the patient privacy or if they need to be observed to allow that to happen. Too. Yeah, these, these uh, unicell blinds, which they're known as, uh, they reside in the glass windows in the doors and in the uh, uh, viewing areas for the nurses opposite their charting station. So if a patient requires privacy, they walk over or the family member walks over, closes the blinds, which are internal to the glass, the labor and delivery rooms are larger, aren't they? Absolutely. Yes, they are a lot larger than here, probably. You know, you're looking at over 300 square feet here. The labor and delivery room is probably about 370 square feet. So what is that additional space for? Uh, for the uh, partners. For the partners? For the partner, and, and the, the babies equipment, can be, the babies, can, can be so in the room. We have areas for the bassinets, whether it's a single baby or twin babies. We have areas uh, for, for baby care uh, inside the labor and delivery room. Wow, fascinating.